Hi everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another vlog. This one is going to be even more special and fun than the last one because it is finally baby time. So I went into the doctor last night and um, I was three centimeters dilated. He said things are really progressing and we went ahead and decided to do the induction tonight at 9 p.m. Our hospital is being awesome and they are making some accommodations. They don't normally induce at night just because staffing is a lot less um, like overnight, but they are making accommodations because of children not being allowed up there, childcare needs are more. And so my sister is gonna come over tonight at um, right after we put her down and she's gonna sleep over here and we are gonna head to the hospital and um, see where this kiddo's at. I've been having a lot of contractions since last night, so I kinda think um, like labor maybe tonight or tomorrow naturally anyway. So we're gonna go in and just give her a little nudge to get going and that is awesome. So there will be some reading in this vlog, but I don't know how much and it'll probably be more um, like baby stuff than reading stuff. I don't really know. So this morning has been wonderful. Um, my husband took today off and so this morning I got up a little bit later than normal. Like I got up at like six or 16 and I just took it really slow and easy. I laid in bed and read for a while and then came down here, ate breakfast, went up and got Ainsley up. And then um, I went and exercised while she ate breakfast with my husband. And then I showered and got like all, everything ready to go. Um, got the bag packed and just feel really good and prepared and um, ready to go. So then she said, mama, I wanna get in your bed and get cozy and read. And so, okay, like that never happens. And if it does, like she'll say she wants to do that and it'll last like two seconds. But this time it lasted like 10 or 15 minutes. So got a little more reading in. Today is a day of very bittersweet emotions because I know it's my last day with her as my only kid. And so I just really want to spend the day with her. Um, and I don't know, like it's, I'm very, very, very excited to have this baby here and to not be pregnant, but it's also sad because it's just like the end of, um, this chapter of life. And so that is, it's just really bittersweet. Um, having an induction is not how I wanted to do this, but we're past the due date. It's time to go. Um, and I'm excited to have her out safely. So as far as reading goes, uh, I picked up a physical copy of Nice Try Jane Center, and this one is about a girl who, for some reason, has dropped out of high school. We don't know. Like, there was an event. It's called The Event right now, and something happened that caused her, she wanted to drop out of high school, and she's just very, um, like, she's still going to the basketball games and stuff, and so I don't really know, but she um, is ready. She's a senior, so she's ready just to move on to community college. Um, her parents are very religious, very non-supportive of her, like dropping out and that kind of stuff. And so she has decided to go to this community college and join this um, reality show that's kind of like Big Brother. I think House of Orange or something is what it's called. And it's a Big Brother real world type house. And so rent is only $200. All the videos are gonna go on YouTube. It's three guys, three girls. So she decides that's what she's gonna do. And so she'll also go to this community college and whatever. Well, the whole book is told in her journal entries because she just, she says like when she, when her therapist wants her to keep a journal, she doesn't, but every other day she does. And she is keeping journal entries for every single day. So I like that because it makes it like the pages turn pretty quick. But it's also, there's no chapters, no breaks, really, like the journal start in the middle of the page and stuff. It's not like it's a fresh page or something. So um, it's really hard to like start and stop in for, especially for people who really like chapters to stop at. Uh, it's really weird for that. And so i am enjoying it so far. I have, it, this book's like two years old and I can't remember if I heard good stuff or bad stuff, but the ratings on Goodreads are pretty good. So my hopes are high. And then I also picked up The Mulberry Tree by uh, Jude Devereaux on audio. And this one is about a woman whose husband has recently died. And he was like multimillionaire, like they had servants, they had all this stuff. And because of the notoriety, like the big, what a big deal he was. She is getting kind of like harassed by the media 
somewhat. And he left her nothing except this beat up old house. And we don't really know why. It seems like he loved her, but he left everything to his brother and sister. And they're really scummy people. And she's got this house that like, she doesn't know where he got it. She ne like, he never went there. She doesn't know anything about it. And so in the grief and everything of losing him, she loses a bunch of weight because she was super overweight. And um, she gets a nose job because she had something wrong. Like she had broken her nose or something. So her nose was very distinguishable. And she changes her name and decides to go to this little house, fix it up and just reinvent herself. And so I am enjoying it. It is very, 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 very descriptive, which we know is not my thing. Um, and I really, so far, am not liking the fat shaming and the message that we're getting as far as her weight because she's getting all this attention from a bunch of different males and she's talking about like how that never would have happened before and uh, just the whole messaging around her physical image is that like now she's desirable and that her husband was the only one who said anything like that and even that was kind of, he didn't really say much about it. And um, just that like now she's desirable, now she flirts back whereas before she never would have done that because they would have laughed at her and just, I, I don't know, I hope there's some redemption there but the descriptiveness isn't bothering me too much because I have it on audio. If it was physical, I would probably have like really a really hard time. Um, there is maybe something supernatural or weird going on because these two ladies showed up and they're acting like, like, like they can't see each other. So I don't know if they're just being weird or if one of them is um, not actually there. I don't really know what's going on. So those are the two books I'm reading. Uh, the rest of the day, I'm going to try to make some food to have some stuff around here so um, my husband can easily feed my daughter and not have to worry about it too much. And um, otherwise, I'm gonna change the sheets on my bed, do all that kind of stuff so it's ready for my sister to come over tonight. And then I'm gonna try to nap because we, of course, are going in at nine o'clock at night. And so after a full day, um, and then going into labor, the adrenaline, like I, I know I'm not gonna be able to nap probably and I probably wouldn't sleep tonight even if I could. But uh, yeah, so that's the plan for today. I will keep you posted. Like I said, this vlog is partially just for me because I very vaguely remember, with my daughter we were induced and I very vaguely remember what we did the day before and I really want to have the memories of like what we're doing on our last day as a family of three. So. Um, yeah, we will, we're, I'm about to go make some lunch right now and we'll probably eat outside because it is another beautiful day. Yesterday was really weird. It started out like sixties and then by the end of the day it was 90, but it took really long time to get there. And today looks like it's going to be the same. This morning when I was exercising, we opened the windows and it was just luxurious. So that was awesome. And, um, yeah, so we'll probably eat outside. And then I think tonight we might do, um, dinner in the living room. If you guys watch my channel very much, we do Sunday Sabbath, Sabbath snacks and we just do kind of snacky food or frozen food or takeout or something and we watch TV while we eat dinner. And I think we're gonna do that tonight just to do something fun and special as our last night um, as a family of three. And I have never left my daughter um, overnight or like I've been the one to put her down and get her up every day of her life. And so it's gonna be really, really hard for me and I really wanna make it special. So I will check in later, bye. Hey everyone, it's about 5.20 and that means we go in in like three and a half hours. A little crazy, a little exciting, a little nerve wracking. Um, I am just feeling very ready. Had had a lot of contractions, a lot of nausea, that kind of stuff today. So I, um, during nap time, did some reading sprints with Bree from Bree Hill. I will link her down below. She's just awesome. So I got a little bit further in Nice Try Jane Center. And if you guys have ever watched the show Big Brother, this is totally like a small scale Big Brother. And I used to love that show. So I am loving that book. I think it's really just fun. It's nothing great, but it's really fun, especially for a Big Brother lover. So, and then I have been also listening to um, The Mulberry Tree because after our reading sprints, my husband came up and we chatted for a little bit and then I won like four hours free of Candy Crush. So I figured while my daughter was napping, I would uh, listen to The Mulberry Tree and play and just kind of chill. Then I came downstairs and he took her for a walk while I threw together uh, like a lentil loaf. It's like a meatloaf, but with lentils. And so now that's in the oven. I'm making some mashed potatoes. And um, hopefully 
our fridge will be stocked. I have been cooking for the past couple days in like big quantities. So then um, if I'm not here, they can have food. And even when I do get back, we can just have food. So hopefully that will get done and be good. I actually, it had walnuts in it and I ran out. So it's half walnuts, half pecans, and I've never done that. So could be a little different, but that's okay. And I have decided we are going to watch The Voice or watch a movie or something while we eat dinner just to make it special. Our last night with just one little girl. And so we're gonna do that. And then my sister's gonna come at eight. We're gonna be at the hospital by nine. And yeah, so the rest of the, today and tomorrow might just be kind of like montage -y things with less um, talking because I just don't know what to expect, but baby will be here soon. So I'm so excited to go in and see if I've dilated anymore. If, um, I don't know, I'm assuming today is June 11th. I'm assuming she'll come on the 12th, but if she's really quick, then maybe she'll come on the 11th. I don't know. So we'll see. I know a lot of people have birthdays, um, like this week. And so she'll probably have a birthday buddy regardless. And I am just so excited. So we are going to eat dinner soon and then just hang out, try to act normal, which is hard and uh, then go to the hospital. So we will see you later. Hey everyone, it's about 1020 and we are just here in the hospital. I am still just three centimeters dilated, so we've got the Pitocin going. Uh, Jeremy got some coffee and some ice cream, so he's got his strategy for staying awake and we are just gonna increase slowly and hang out. So I will update more later. Hey everyone, so it's 10.30 now and the doctor just came in and broke my water. So hopefully things will start progressing a little bit quicker. Um, they are increasing Pitocin every 30 minutes instead of every 15 because I am very sensitive to it. So um, I am just had my second increase and I'm still three. So uh, water's broken, Pitocin just got increased. Hopefully we'll get the show on the road. Hey everyone, it is about 7.45 and um, last night did not go quite like I expected it to. So the doctor came in and broke my water about 10.30 and by about 12.30 I was ready for an epidural. So um, I told the nurse like let's go ahead and get the anesthesiologist here and so she said she called him. He showed up about 1.15 and gave me the epidural and um, it was not helping, it wasn't taking. And so I was like, guys, it's it's still hurting, like nothing has changed, nothing has changed. And then I was like, I think um, maybe I need to be checked. And so she checked me and I was eight centimeters dilated and like five minutes later I was fully dilated. So the epidural didn't quite take because um, it just went too fast. Like the epidural didn't have time to get in my bloodstream or whatever and like it couldn't keep up with the pain. So. Um, I ended up pushing for 10 or 15 minutes and she was born at 212. So here she is and um, she is doing great. I'm doing pretty good and have not quite haven't I haven't slept yet and so um, it's been like 28 hours. Jeremy just went home to get Ainsley up and do breakfast and that kind of stuff. And so then I think he may nap. Um, my sister is being wonderful and helping out, and so she can hang out with Ainsley while he naps. I'm going to stay here and obviously nap um, and hopefully see the pediatrician soon and all that kind of stuff. So it is a wonderful day. She still doesn't have a name, but she did really well. She was 8 pounds, 21 inches, a little smaller than they guessed, and she just was a rock star. So um, overall, it could not have gone better, and I'm so glad to have her here. So um, right now, I'm just waiting. My sister's going to come up. Her and Jeremy are kind of tag teaming, so she's going to come up. And I'm going to eat some breakfast, and hopefully after the pediatrician comes and stuff, I'll take a nap. But while I'm sitting here, I'm just going to listen to The Mulberry Tree by Jude Devereaux. And I'm not really liking this. I think I thought about DNFing it. I'm about halfway through, and I'm listening to it on Scribd. And so I can only go to two times, and it's really slow. And it's just kind of boring, overly descriptive. Um, I don't know. So we'll see if I finish it. But I'm going to listen to it now and talk, check in later. Hey everyone, it's about 11 o'clock and I um, just wanted to tell you, fake out, my sister was not able to come up here. They say you can have um, one support person and one visitor, uh, but they wouldn't let her come. So I have just been by myself, decided to DNF the mulberry 
mulberry tree, I think is what it's called. Uh, I just wasn't interested. I read about 70% of it and then just couldn't, couldn't care less. So I am going to pick up the blind kit or the, the blind kiss, I think by Renee Carlino. I love Renee Carlino. And so I'm going to listen to that on audio. Um, baby is napping. She, um, kind of had a big spit up thing. So good news is my milk supply is good. Bad news is it was all over our bed. So, um, got a new bed. She's sleeping. I think I might try to relax for a little bit. Uh, Jeremy is planning to come up here. We FaceTimed with Ainsley earlier this morning and that was really fun. I really miss her. Um, we found out we have to stay until she's 24 hours old, which will be two this morning. So we will be here till tomorrow morning. So it's a whole day away from her, from Ainsley. And, um, that is hard for me, but I know she's okay and I know we're okay. So that feels good. So um, now, yeah, I'm going to lay around until Jeremy comes up and then try to feed her and just hang out. So um, tonight, Jeremy's going to come um, and then go home and eat lunch with Ainsley and then come back during nap time. And then he'll go home at dinner time and just stay home and stay there for the night. So I'm hoping we'll get some good sleep, maybe some good audiobook listening, maybe some good reading, but I'm so tired. I can't imagine that I will be reading a whole lot physically, but maybe we'll see so I will update later hey everyone so it's about 6 15 and we are still just here hanging out um I we still don't have a name for this child so that's great um Jeremy just left to go do dinner with Ainsley and put her down and stuff and so he um is gone for the night and like I've always thought like this would be like my dream <laughs> like to be in a hotel room or something by myself where it's quiet and you can just read and hang out watch tv if you want uh, come to find out I'm wrong. I am like so stir crazy. And part of it is because we can't like really go roam the hallways or anything. Um, just because of COVID stuff. So we're stuck in this room and it's just me and the baby and she's sleeping a lot and I can't sleep. And so like, I am just feeling really anxious about it and like very ready to get home. And it makes me more grateful for the craziness of my life. And so that's a silver lining, I guess. But I have nice try Jane Center here physically to read. So I might try to do that. Dinner has not been delivered yet. So I might try to do that before dinner comes. And then um, I have started The Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino on audio. And I just barely started it. So I don't really know anything about it. But if I'm too distracted to do either of those, I might just watch booktube because I am so behind. This seems like a good opportunity to do that. But, um, yeah, so I may get up and walk circles around this room. I don't know. We are supposed to be discharged tomorrow between 7 and 8 in the morning because she has to be here until um, her, she's 24 hours old, which will be at 2 this morning. And then um, her doctor will come give her a final check. My doctor will come give me a final check. And then we'll be out of here. So I think Jeremy and Aisley will come get us and it'll be really fun to introduce the girls and I just can't wait. So I'm so excited. Um, like I predicted, not much reading going on in this vlog, but still we've got a baby and she's healthy and she's awesome and she's just sleeping away. So I will check in later. So I'm in this wonderful hospital lighting and um, it's about 6.15 and we're just hoping to get out of here in about an hour. Last night went really good. She did um, for sure a three hour stretch, maybe even four. And then we did her all of her tests at 2.15 this morning uh, and it was just blood tests and weighed her and all that kind of stuff. She has lost nine ounces, which is really good. Um, they say they like to see less than 10% and that is like five or six percent so she's doing really good that way um now we are just waiting the pediatrician's gonna come give her a final check the ob is gonna come give me a final check and then hopefully we'll be out of here in an hour or so. so so no reading has been done but i've been watching a lot of youtube and that is awesome that feels really good um i am just now going to call jeremy back and see if we can get this girl's name finalized and get out of here so i am so excited to shower and just be home and rest in my own bed I just and take a walk maybe I don't know and like do all the non-pregnant things like eat comfortably bend over walk around walk upstairs like can't even wait so I will check in later hey everyone we are officially heading home as a family of four so we've got both girls in the back mm -hmm. and uh yeah we're we're heading home so 
we are very ready to be home and just shower and get clean and rest and hang out. So that's the plan. Ainsley, are you excited? Yeah. Yay. Are you a big sister? Yeah. Woohoo! I will update later. <laughs> what? Your baby sister's in her seat? Okay. <laughs> hey everyone, I am just laying here on the couch with little Annie. Um, we have decided to name her Annie Elizabeth and Annie is just a name we really like and Elizabeth is my middle name. So we have um, gone ahead and done that. We finally reached a agreement. So um, Annie Elizabeth it is. So um, we just got home a little bit ago and unloaded some stuff, let Ainsley hold her for a while and just let some bonding happen and got a little cleaning done. Now Ainsley and Jeremy are doing grocery pickup and Annie and I are laying on the couch and I'm reading Nice Try Jane Center. And again, I just think this book is so fun for any fans of uh, Big Brother, the show. It's just very similar and I am really, really enjoying it. So I am like 120 pages in, they read super fast and I am much more able to focus on a physical book that I hold in my hands than like an audiobook or an ebook or anything right now. And so I think I'm just going to stick with that and uh, maybe try Blind Kiss, um, my audiobook, more tonight and just see if I can focus a little bit better now that we're home. She's named, everything's good. I don't know, we'll see. So as far as this vlog goes, I don't know how long I'll keep it going because my reading is not um, going as quickly as it normally does. And so I don't know if I'll keep doing this for a couple days and see if I can get back on track or what I'll do. But um, yeah, today is still Saturday. So maybe through the weekend, I don't know. Saturday and Sunday, we're just gonna be obviously trying to figure out family of four because I don't know how to do it. Like she, this little one wants to eat all the time. And so it's hard to like multitask. And then also when she's sleeping, it's like I, now, now that I have one, I know how quick the baby snuggles go. So I really want to just like, when like right now she's sleeping and I, I'm starving. There's so much to do but I just can't make myself leave this couch because I know so soon she's not going to want to cuddle. And, um, but then how do you balance that with your two year old and not just divide and conquer because it's so great to be home and to have her. She just like, she came running when she saw me at, come out of the hospital and it was just so sweet. And, uh, so I really want to do both and I don't know how you do it. So moms of multiples, <laughs> give me your tips. So, um, yeah, when they get home, I am going to see what she's doing and hopefully put her in a little swing or chair or something and get her settled, make some lunch. And um, I don't know, like I think today's just gonna be getting all the baby stuff ready, getting like I got a new uh, ring sling, like a way of holding her and I think she'll really like that. So getting that figured out, getting the outlet sleep sock thing back hooked up and all that kind of stuff um, for newborns that we don't have hooked up. So. That's the plan, and we'll check in later. Hey, everyone. It is Sunday at about 1230, and I have not updated since yesterday um, just because things are going about as you would expect. Meal times are a little crazy. All the time's a little crazy trying to balance um, cuddling and feeding a little newborn and then a two-year-old. It's just a... a it's definitely something I'm gonna have to learn how to do. So um, just been a little chaotic, but been really good. Uh, last night, dinner and bath time were a little little hectic, but then bedtime was awesome. Annie and I went to sleep probably 10.30 or 11, and then she just woke up at 1.30 and 4.30, and she did so good, so I cannot complain. I slept better than I have in months and months. This pregnancy was just so hard that having her out, I feel, thousands of times better. So I'm so glad she's here. And last night being home, I was finally able to like focus and read. And so I read um, about half of Nice Try Jane Center and I'm still really liking it, but not as much. It is definitely like getting a little dull. And so I don't know, I don't really identify with our main character very much. And so I don't know she like she's just a very flat character and like intentionally flat but i don't know i'm having a hard time like staying interested in her story but that one is still in progress and i really need to get it done because i've been reading that for like three or four days and that is just kind of a long time for me 
um, especially in this format. It's told in like diary, and so she does like initials of people and that kind of stuff. And so it's like I have to refresh my mind every time I go into it. And so yeah, that is what I'm reading physically. And then I started, um, I restarted Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino on audio, and I'm really liking this. It is told in two perspectives. Um, Gavin and Penny are the, the characters, and it's told in present day, they are best friends, and then they, but they met 14 years ago. And she's married to a different guy with a kid. They're just best friends now. And so we're figuring out like, have they ever been more? Are they gonna be more? Are they truly friends? What's going on? And it is just so good. The whole premise that is listed on Goodreads and like the back and stuff about this science experiment or whatever, where you go into a dark room and um, kiss a person, that is what happened 14 years ago. And it's like very, very, very minimal in the story. So I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna be friends to lovers, second chance romance, or if it's just gonna be a friendship thing. I don't know. And I'm halfway through really enjoying it. So um, those two things are going on as far as reading goes. I don't know if I'll finish either today. I'm gonna finish this vlog whenever I finish those books because this is a weird vlog. So um, yeah, otherwise, life-wise, it's 1230. We just finished watching church. Um, Annie is sleeping. And so I'm going to go try to make some lunch and we'll eat and then take naps and uh, just go on with the day. So I will check in later. Hey everyone, it's like 7.45 on Sunday and I'm just on for a quick update to let you know I finished Nice Try Jane Center and I'm giving it two and a half stars. I just didn't really like it. And reading the reviews, a lot of people said the opposite of me. Like I thought the first hundred pages were the best. I really got sucked in but then it just kind of got monotonous and I just really kind of lost interest. And so this book, like I think I have talked about, is about a girl who applies to go on this reality show that's kind of like Big Brother. And so they're all trapped in this house, um, except it's a little different because they only have to be there like a certain amount of hours a day. They can stay other places and they can come and go. But there's cameras everywhere watching them. There's different like games and challenges they have to do. And then they vote somebody out every week or whatever. So it's her experience in that house and that game. And we also see her family and some other friends. And we get to know Jane Center a little bit more. And I loved the mental health rep because Jane has depression. And she like... This book doesn't explicitly like talk about her depression that much, but it just shows like because we're in her head because it's diary format, so we are really in her head. We get to see just like firsthand what life is like for somebody struggling with depression. And so I really appreciated that and really liked it, but reading from such a flat character who is so like emotionally detached is hard to keep interest if that makes any sense so um i just personally kind of got bored with it and i think the format was great like i like that it make it made it move quick but i would have liked to see some other perspectives perhaps or just something to kind of break it up and so two and a half stars glad i read it because it was one on my shelf that i've been kind of just passing by and so i'm glad i read it and yeah, so then I'm going to finish Last Kiss or Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino tonight on audio. And then I think I'll probably wrap this vlog up tomorrow. So that is it. Um, baby wise, everything is just still going great. My mom and dad came over um, and we had a little yard party um, where they got to meet Annie and they brought us some food. My mom has been the MVP of the past couple days because she brought us food last night and tonight. And so it's just wonderful having dinner and not having to worry about that. So shout out to mom. I think she watches these. So thank you, thank you. It is so appreciated. Um, and yeah, so that was really all we've done today. It's like somehow the hours have passed and I have spent a lot of time on this couch feeding this little girl. She is a growing kid, I guess. And so that's really everything. Um, I will check in tomorrow and let you know what I think of Blind Kiss. Hey everyone, it is 11.30 on Monday and we just got back. We went to Annie's little first newborn uh, appointment and she was doing wonderful. So now we don't have to go back until she's a month old. And then we went to the library and returned some books because they are doing due, date, due dates again. And now we're home. So. <laughs>
so I finished Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino last night, and the scenery has changed a little because I just pulled into the garage, and so now I've got a little girl driving the car on my lap. So, um, yeah, I finished Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino, and I loved it. I am going to give it either four or four and a half stars. It is a second chance romance. It is just a very angsty, very full of like, come on, you guys, it just really pining for them to be together, and um, they can't for different reasons, and I just, I very much enjoyed it, and uh, um, I don't know if I've even said what it's about. This is going to be such a scatterbrained vlog, but it's about a woman who is married to this guy. They've got a 14 year old son and she's got a best, best friend who is a guy that 14 years ago they met in the science experiments at, at college that they had to go into a room, don't know each other or anything, and they have to kiss in the dark and just see, like, I guess they're studying like attraction and stuff without physical appearance. And so um, yeah, they met, became friends through that, and they are still friends. Life's going one way for him. It's going a different way for her. They both have stuff going on, and we get to see, like, flashbacks of 14 years ago as well as current times from both of their perspectives, and so I love that. I love the multiple timelines. I love the multiple multiple perspectives. Overall, I just very much enjoyed this book. And I am a Renee Carlino fangirl. I would highly suggest you pick up anything by her, but this one was no exception. So that is the end of this bringing home baby vlog. We did it. We brought home a baby. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's good. We're hanging in there. So that is everything. So thank you for watching. If you've read any of these books, let me know. And um, thanks again for hanging in there with the craziness that is this vlog. We'll talk to you later. Bye.